Welcome to Music and Booze with Mo. I'm Mo Herms, and I've worked in the music industry most of my life, so have met some pretty amazing musicians over the years. I also love a good cocktail, and I've encountered some really interesting bartenders as well. It seems that there is a lot of crossover, so when I can, I like to talk to musicians and bartenders about music and booze. Join us at the bar, won't you? Music and Booze with Mo is brought to you by the Independent FM Los Angeles. You can tune in to Indie at theindependent.fm online, and you can also find us on Facebook in order to get an idea of who is on when. You can find me, Mo, on the Independent FM Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific time, and Fridays from 1 to 3 as well. We spend all kinds of indie and alternative music, and it's a really good time, so check out the Independent FM. Today I am joined by Eddie Spaghetti of The Broken Shaker in Miami. The Broken Shaker Miami has since opened up another bar in Chicago and very recently one in Los Angeles as well, which wasn't yet open at the time we did this interview. We sat down on a hot, humid, kind of rainy day in Miami to chat about their garden where uh, they grow their own herbs, which are used in the cocktails, fabulous cocktail menus, and of course, lots and lots of rock and roll. So get ready to tune in and listen to us talk about delicious things and oh, so much David Bowie and Neil Young coming up, coming up now for you on Music and Booze with Mo. Thanks for tuning in. Here's Eddie Spaghetti. Closer to you. I just want to get closer to you. So, um, and I noticed that I'm always loud, but since you're a musician, you can probably be loud too. I got so yeah, I'll project. It's all in there, so you talk to that and everything. Um, tell me who you are and where uh, we are. Well, we're at the Broken Shaker in Miami. Yes. The original Broken Shaker. The original Broken Shaker. Yes, we have no one in Chicago, one in LA. Is the Chicago one open now? Yeah, it's been open. Oh, it has, okay. Yeah, the, the one LA in LA, LA is, is not open. quite open. It's is just, it? Yeah, it's basically open. It's about to nice. open, but basically when this comes out, it's going to be. Yeah. It's been a quite an endeavor for yeah, everyone totally. here. But so, and you're Eddie? Uh, my Eddie name's Eddie. Uh, people call me Spaghetti. Eddie Spaghetti. Do they really? Yeah, everybody. Do you know Eddie Spaghetti, Spaghetti the Spaghetti, Spaghetto. Yes, I do. I mean, you know who it is. Yes. Uh, I don't know if that's your kind of music or not, but it's funny. There is already It's Eddie country Spaghetti. rock. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I've, looked, I've Googled Eddie, Eddie Spaghetti's greatest hits. It was hits. rowdy in the 90s. It was. It was. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the band, though. Uh, Super Suckers. Super Suckers. Super Suckers, yeah. Eddie Spaghetti from Super mm-hmm. Super Suckers, yeah. But that no, is not you. No relation. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll know if you get me laughing hard enough, I'll start coughing. <laughs> me too. Right? Yeah. We're both suffering with colds because that's what humidity in Miami does to you. Oh my God, you have no idea. <laughs> Are you from Miami originally? Uh, I was born in Hialeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, in where? In Hialeah. Hialeah. Yeah, I was born in Miami. Oh, wow. Uh, but immediately I was, uh, we moved to New York and I was raised in upstate New York. Oh, okay. So 11 years I lived in uh, the mountains, uh-huh. back and forth from like Queens, Astoria, back yeah. to the upstate. My brother's in Crown Heights. Yeah. So that's the bit of New York I get to go visit. Yeah, I had a lot of that growing up and then some of Jersey and then came back here 17 years ago. Oh, yeah. And yeah. how long have you been with Broken Shaker? I've been here at least, I think going on 17 months now. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, I remember when this place opened. I was here for the yeah, opening. Yeah, I was going to say, okay, so tell... <laughs> I love it. Tell us about Broken Shaker, though, because it was the first time I came here. I wandered up, and I'm like, it's in a hostel? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't realize. Well, this was the Broken Shaker. Uh, you can't, and this being you can't on, see me, so yeah. audibly I'm going to explain. It's just a tiki hut, which is now where the servers stand and uh, hosts and so see people but I did originally there's a sign over there that says tiki bar and I yeah. never thought of it as a tiki thing yeah I mean now it's a you know little hut but originally uh, the Broken Shaker was a pop up mm-hmm. and it was only supposed to last a few months here yeah but it grew in success and uh, they integrated it within the building and 
And it's it's going to be five years now. What was the idea behind having a little tiki hut? Do you know? Has anyone ever? They it, were just like the, it's outside. It's the it's the the it's, we have these it's the love child of of uh, of Gabe and Alad. They oh. just they wanted this tiki. Uh, oh really? The so when yeah. they started, they wanted something kind of tiki esque. Oh for sure, and they they pretty much I mastered the that. style that we've continued today. Oh, I never knew that. I mean, I've come here and there's this beautiful courtyard. And you sit out in this gorgeous courtyard, and I'm used to tiki's being, you know, tiki bars being dark indoor, yeah. with all the stuff hanging from the or, ceiling. Or the polar opposite in the Caribbean beach somewhere. Yeah, like, actually. Like, there's no gray area, but I think they saw where we're sitting, which is a beautiful courtyard with, you know, trees and flowers, and it kind of made sense to go tiki. And a disco ball. You know, <laughs> and, and a disco ball. That, One little disco ball. Those those happen. See, we have events here, and one day we put them up, and they should stay. They just stay? They, they're little, like... Tokens you know, of that past is actually events. very tiki. Yeah, you, know, you keep it. So much stuff, it gets hung up and it just yeah. never gets. Yeah, really, their hoarders are really cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's tiki. So it extends into the back. I've never. Well, the There's the bar room. the bar is actually inside. Oh, okay. This isn't the bar. This is again where I the servers. Uh, where they prep where everything. They, well, they, well, they well they check you out. They seat you. Yeah. They take yeah. your order. Yeah. They have water there. They have cups. I've only just sat outside because it's so lovely. You know, this is really where, yeah. I mean, when you'll, it'll open and you'll get to see what it is inside. And so when the, the other time I came here, you have to tell me how the cocktail program happens here. I remember the menu was all uh, chakras. So oh, that was a long was, time ago. It was a long time ago. It was two years ago. I've heard about that. It was really I've good. Heard, and yeah, I I've only heard laughing. stories. Yeah, because there was one that I had. And I looked at the ingredients, and it was basically like like a green machine kind of drink, mm -hmm. like all the good green juices, like kale and celery and all that kind of stuff. But it pertains to your your, your chocolate. Yeah, right. Because yeah. it was going to make me healthy, and I looked at it. I'm all, mm, that actually looks kind of good, and it has tequila in it. Yeah. That was the thing. <laughs> so ever since then, I always, whenever I see those juices at some organic market or something, uh -huh. you think of tequila. I totally <laughs> want to take it put tequila in it because of this place. It's funny how this inspires you in different ways. Oh, absolutely. So what is your understanding of the cocktail program here? Do they change it up seasonally? They, they, well, we have monthlies. Oh, every monthly? every okay. month we come up with a, with a new uh, monthly cocktail menu. And then we have seasonal, which will last, you know, three, four months. Yeah, okay. And a lot of the, se you know, a lot of the monthlies will carry on to the seasonal and we'll replace that. And it's constantly just reinventing itself. Nice. Uh, we, we try... We're always trying to inspire each other and and get each other to create new cocktails for this because. Do you guys use? I noticed there's a garden right over here too. We use a lot from the garden. Yeah. Yeah. Really? From for here and for the kitchen. And for the kitchen. Yeah. Because there's a restaurant as well. For sure. I mean, we have a we have a, a drink on our menu now called the Garden Bees, and mm -hmm. the garnish is a. a the Garden a, Bees. Garden Bees. Yeah. Okay. And it's a it's it's garnished with a painted amaranth straight from our garden. Oh, see, I gotta hang around so, when that place opens. So it's cool because I get yeah. to go, you know come to work and I you know grab the the strawberries or whatever the yeah. stuff downstairs and I get to go to the garden and pick flowers. And, and that's it makes it so much yeah because I've worked in other bars and it's it was never like that yeah totally it totally. was like carry this keg you know just normal bar stuff that it's fun to learn but this totally this cool, changed the game for me you're actually gardening yeah. to make the drinks it's great but what's one of your favorite drinks that you've had off this menu here Do you honestly remember? this menu I'm or sure there's so many I mean there's so I many say this menu since you've in your 17 months hanging oh out oh my god um, is there one or two that stand out for you a lot honestly there's always one There's in always each one. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like we had, we have one actually. I'll tell you what. We have one that was, that was made when they first did the pop up, and we still have it today. It's, oh really? And it's not on the menu. Oh. It's something that secret menu. <laughs> yeah, it's something that you just know to order, and it's a cocoa puff old fashioned. Cocoa puff, like it's, the like the cereal. It's bourbon infused cocoa puff cereal. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and and and, they just and keep ser that served as an old fashioned. Like, yeah. Wow. That one's crazy. consistently my favorite. Yeah. But I would call that a guilty pleasure, except I don't believe in guilty pleasures. Yeah. Because you should always be happy with what makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. there's always a tomorrow. So. Yeah. Right? <laughs> totally. So we're sitting outside, and there's nice music in the background. People can kind of hear, and part of what we're here is talk about music as well as cocktails. So, the staff here, who I mean. Who, do you guys ever have bands play here or music play here? Or it's just we DJs used to. Or anything we like used that? to, but I think as far as like uh, licenses it is for it, outside. Yeah, and, uh, and you know the city doesn't like certain yeah, things. And yeah. So, I've actually played a show here many, many, uh -huh. many years ago. Yeah. 
Uh, and it, it was right here. They would set up the music, and then I would come, and the people were playing acoustic and everything. And but that hasn't really been a thing in a while. But yeah. Well, so what do you play? I play guitar. Yeah. I've so been playing guitar for like 16 ever. years now. Yeah. Oh, nice. And what is your, what kind of music do you play? I mean, um, when you play guitar. You play all kinds of different things. Yeah. It's kind of like a tough question because when I sit at home, I like to just play acoustic and kind of folk it up, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> just entertain myself. Yeah. But I perform, <laughs> when I perform, I play rock and roll. I play yeah. nice, loud. So do you, are you a solo roll. artist? Do you play with a band? Uh, I play with a band. I haven't oh, yeah. solo artist in a while. Okay. Yeah. So do you sing too? Uh, nah, sing not much. I like to do backup. I like yeah. to write the music and lyrics and give it to a better singer. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know how that goes. So who, um, what artist got you started into music? What was it that made you, or did you just, you were just compelled to pick up a guitar? Well, honestly, it's it's a tough question because I, uh, my father gave me a guitar and I strummed it once and put it in my closet for two years. I moved here and my cousin was picking up a guitar and he wanted someone to play with. So I was like, oh, hey, I got one. Mm -hmm. And that's what introduced me. We listened to a ton of Metallica. It was <laughs> always Metallica. And I would do the rhythm, he'd do the solos. And from there, it was like, the most addicting thing I could ever think of. That's not an easy way to start, is with Metallica. No, it's it's really. A lot of a lot of tabs and a lot so of what practice. kind of stuff are you playing now? When you say rock and roll, are you playing like metal? Are you playing? No, I I have a I, I guess over the years I've I've grown a style mm -hmm. and it's very bluesy. Oh really? Very bluesy. Oh that's cool. So we can get it can get heavy rock, kind of like a stoner rock where yeah, you do yeah. this, you know, you bob your head nice. Well, we were well. just talking about Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, kind of like that. So we were talking about that before we went on the microphone, just for those of you just tuning in, and about how they actually came here to Broken Shaker. Mm -hmm for a party and you didn't yeah. get to meet any of the guys though. I did I I did but it, uh, they but it don't the course of we're work. not supposed to yeah so yeah. I kind of just like enjoyed it from I was the first one the song because I was in the office uh -huh. and I saw him in the camera yeah I was like that's Please no one no one here knows who this guy is <laughs> and then by the time I got up it was like the bassist of um of the dead weather also oh yeah <laughs> and a bunch of other bunch of uh, rock and roll that kind of thing happens and I live yeah. in LA so I understand you know we'll see someone famous walk through and you don't want to walk even if you're working in the environment you're not going to walk up and mm. hey how's it no. going but to that end you guys are very well known internationally yeah bar. I mean, this yeah. bar has had a lot of success I think you guys have had global recognition you feel it when you work here yeah so I would think that you probably have people come through here oh yeah and stay here who are of no so lot. can you off the top of your head can you think of any like famous people that have stumbled through here um, are you mostly just I sat Rosario I uh, sat Rosario Dawson once oh that's cool she's really cool I she was very chill she came with her ago. mom and it was like super chill mm -hmm. yeah. it was like hanging out with una prima or something like right like, totally I like, right. totally when I met her she was yeah. just like that you know she's yeah. a gamer too is she I think I heard that yeah she's she she's also the night nurse <laughs> yeah that's right that's true yes she is she um uh, the friend that I met her through, it was several years ago, because she stopped into uh, someone that I worked freelance with. This other woman worked freelance too, she did design, and they were friends. She came in to meet her friend, and they were talking with the person we consulted with about mm. gaming, and they wanted to create a game, a video game. Mm. 
that was a couple years ago, so I guess she hasn't gotten it. It's a big market now, so. Yeah, yeah, but I thought it was really cool that, yeah. you know, they had this idea and they were trying to flesh it out. So back to the music the thing, though. Yeah. So you play kind of more bluesy stuff these days. Well, yeah, I mean, the project I've been in now is probably the one of the most fun projects I've been in, because mm -hmm. it's for fun. It's yeah. just me and my best friend that he's been my drummer for eight, nine years now. So is this a drummer and a guitar? No, we have okay. a we have another good friend of ours that kind of uh, we both had a, a band together over the years, and uh, the band I had split up, but we contacted him. We wanted him to sing and play guitar, and then we got yeah. another. We just got the so a little group together, just four piece. Yeah. And we just want to be able to write an album, record it, put it on vinyl, and just enjoy having something on vinyl. Yeah. Isn't it nice how vinyl not, is so back? It's been back. It's, it's been around, but away. now it's actually like way in back. your face. Yeah. And it's I mean, awesome. I worked at a record store maybe like 15 years ago, and vinyl was, it took a lot longer to get vinyl because there were not that many places yeah. pressing it. So now there are a lot more places pressing it. We were talking about Jack White. He's got his Bro, own third vinyl man. pressing. He has you know? a little booth. He's got everything. I know. You can, I love that. You have, you, go, have you seen a... I have seen it at South by Southwest. Yeah. Get your own. Neil Young five. recorded an album in that. That's right. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so great. He's one of my biggest influences. Is Neil Young? Yeah. I had friends who toured with him. Uh, band called Everest. I think I've heard of them. Yeah, so they were signed to his label for a while. Sick. And they toured with him for a couple of years, actually. And they always had these great stories about him. He's oh a real hard God. worker, but he's also kind of a, like, yeah. all over the place. He's crazy. The I, I heard he takes a, a trailer with two of his Harleys on tour. Ooh. So when they stop, he I'll just, have to ask them, he I pulled out that. and he just rides his Harley around he's town. Gotta, you know what? That's freaking if, awesome. If you can do it, do it. Right? <laughs> yeah. I would totally do I love, that if I was a rock I love star. Him. He's, it yeah. could be, there could be worse things, worse habits to have when you're a rock star. So you're a Neil Young guy. So what's your favorite Neil yeah. Young album then? Oh my God. Um, Is it hard to pick just one? No. Um, on the Beach. On the Beach? Yeah. I'm not as familiar with that one. On so the Beach. Oh my God, you have it. to get that what album. What are the songs on it? Oh my God, there's so what many. What song it's, I might know? Uh, I would make you sing for me. Except no. That you told me hold that on. You can't do it. You're like, oh, you can pull it up on your phone. Yeah, let me pull it up because I don't remember the... <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. I, I and I've been looking but for that album too on vinyl. Like vinyl. Yeah, and. Oh, you'll be able. To, well. Yeah, I guess you would have to dig. A friend of mine that I met in Hollywood, the very, I think it's the first Neil Young album. It looks kind of like a painting of him. See, the first or the second one, and my friend told me that his uncle did that. No way. And I was just like. How? He goes, oh, he just used to hang out in a coffee shop where Neil Young was all the time. Oh, my God. And he would just paint people who were in there. And Neil Young liked his painting. So he just took it and made it his album cover or something. That's crazy. Yeah, that's not so bad. That would totally be okay. <laughs> okay, so all right, there's a song. This. Straight up, it's called On the Beach. That's the song. You would know for the turnstiles. Oh, yes. I know that's that. on that album. Okay, okay. But you listen to On the Beach. Mm -hmm. and Is that the song that makes you cry? It kind of does, but you have to. Now I'm living out here on the beach. But those seagulls are still out of reach. Went to the radio interview. I ended up alone at the microphone. Look up the Tom York version, and then you start oh. to realize how much Tom York took influence from Neil Young. Oh wow! So he covers that song, and it's like perfect. So he does it a note for note cover. He doesn't yeah, do like his, but his own his answer. own little thing, and yeah, like usually you know Tom York will like put his own yeah. thing. No, he just like gave yeah. kind of like a respectful cover. Really? Like, oh, yeah. that's interesting. And I didn't know. I was like, because I'm a huge Radiohead fan, and then when I found. Yeah, I saw you guys he was a radio. Pin. Yeah, he, <laughs> well, I saw him when they came into Do town. You have a Michael Jackson pin too. Yeah, is that what that is? Yeah, my girlfriend got me that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you know, aliens. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that just looks like aliens. Those are my three things: music, aliens, music, and aliens, and Michael dancing. Jackson. <laughs> dancing? Is it dancing or Michael Jackson? Both. Both. Yeah. Nice, nice. I mean, you think of dancing when you think of Michael. It's true. And actually, I was talking with someone else about that very recently yeah. about how. At a wedding, my friend, the bride, requested Billie Jean, but they played Beat It instead. <laughs> and we're kind of like, I don't know how you mix those two up, but we can still dance to it. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. All right, so, so would, so on the beach then, would that be, 
that was like an informative or an informative I mean record for you obviously yeah and I found it later on in my Neil Young kind of Mm -hmm. days because I grew up listening to Neil Young Um, I was always listening to the same Neil Young so I remember I started expanding yeah and I found that record and it was like it was the time it was the the sound I wanted you know like because there's I have a I haven't someone gifted me and uh a Neil Young vinyl yeah because he's just like my friends know I'm in love with this guy yeah right and it was like a, it was called like the Blue Notes or something and it was a Rockabilly album he wrote oh wow and it was you'll never hear him Do play that. like that yeah and I was like this is crazy that's and awesome I ended up loving it because it was because it was different my, but it was one of my favorite him. artists yeah but it was something completely different and, like a new but sound still at the end of the day was it still Neil Young it was it's you just know? Cause, I mean, I was, mean, in a sense, because was it like the lyrics were in there. Yeah, the or, lyrics were in there, and, and his composition. Because I can't see him doing like a bubblegum album, you know. Yeah, no, you're totally right. It's I just, don't think that's in him. A lot of a lot of what he gave to me, or that I take, is is his when he plays his Les Paul, like when like Southern Man is just rocking, and yeah. then that that yeah. solo comes in. Yeah. Like I lose my shit every time. <laughs> I really do. I'll never and like well, I've, seen, gotta, I've seen him live too. And oh, I've seen. I him cried. Live. I cried when I saw him live because yeah, I was well, with my dad and he played. You know. Did your dad cry yeah. too? We both cried. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> awesome. I love that story. Well, okay. So then let's bring it back to the booze then. If you're listening to On the Beach, what drink do you want to have while you're sitting there? Listening Honestly, to it? a straight, a uh, scotch. Just a scotch. Just like neat. Neat. Just sit there and just sip on yeah, that while no you're right. listening. Mm-hmm lay back and yeah because you don't want to like yeah you don't want to have to feel like you need to finish your drink while you're relaxing listening to music nice. when I listen to music I want to be able to like match that with what I'm drinking oh, you know lovely yeah yeah because totally. if you're dancing and you're doing something else you want to like yeah, you want a cocktail keeping, or a shot or yeah, a beer totally. you know and you're, you can you're put the beer down energy yeah. up and everything even right? a beer goes warm so you want yeah. just a straight scotch Nice. See, I, you didn't even hesitate. I love no. that. Well, I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I did it last night, well, to be honest. <laughs> right, fact, so, I mean, I kind of figure it's, you know, there is this deep connection between food, cocktails, music. Absolutely. I think it's that bacchanalia within us all. You know, we all have, we all want to have that, we want to let go, we want to relax, we want to put ourselves in space, or we want to be wild, all right. and all these things come together. It, it's just what you uh, combine to yeah. create that experience. So, let's roll with... Um, what are a couple records, just one or two other ones that are like Desert Island records for you or something? What can you not live without? Uh, for sure. Besides Neil Young. Besides Neil Young? Yeah. Okay. you just said you love Radiohead too. There's yeah. There's stuff floating around. So you've got other stuff going on in your head. Well, Radiohead is a, is a, is a given, but if we're talking vinyl, I have a Paul Simon record. Still crazy after all these years. Yep. I don't know why, but that album always does it. You know, um, I'd have to go with Bob Dylan. I have a Bob Dylan greatest hits, uh, and I just purchased a Frank Sinatra Legend series for like two dollars, oh, and nice. it's all of his greatest, and that's been and giving that me life lately. Is... It's just a different sound, it's a different composition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but one album I definitely. Frank Sinatra is one of those. It's really interesting to me when I talk to musicians Frank Sinatra comes up a lot there's such a deep deep respect oh he's for I think because he pulled and talk about sitting down and having a scotch right mm-hmm. but he I think because that's he, another music booze kind of conversation right? right yeah I think that he just worked with such great musicians but mm-hmm. he was such a control freak mm-hmm. he was that he pulled that all together mm-hmm. so you need to though, be yeah so even if he wasn't what you would think of is like he didn't sit down and write all the songs himself and do all this. He still had control over everything. There's such a deep respect for what he was able to bring together and mm. offer. And all yeah, that. I mean the Rat Pack, right? Which is so much fun and so ahead of their time in a lot of ways. Like with the attitude forward thinking. Absolutely. You know, I wish there was more of that. Yeah. You know, that people could have fun the way they had fun and be politically correct. Yeah. And, and wear suits. And wear suits. <laughs> yeah, what's up? I'm a girl who likes guys in suits. What can I say? But then I date musicians, so yeah, they're usually not wearing suits. No. No. <laughs> so back to Radiohead. Oh okay. no, no, you were doing Bob Dylan. Which yeah. Put just the oh, and then the, I have a. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I have a. Oh, I just totally just spaced the name. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, get you a, a Steppenwolf. I have a Steppenwolf record, Ooh, and it's live. 
Oh, really? It's all live, and nice. I and I found it for four dollars somewhere. Nice. And I, when I, I put it, it in, it was insanely amazing, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting with my friend, and then halfway through the record, he goes, "Dude, this is you." And I'm like, "What?" He goes, "You play exactly like this guy." Really? And I kind of sat there. I was like, "That's weird. I never really took influence <laughs> from this." And I listened hard. I was like, "I sound exactly like this guy. Like, oh my God, like awesome. the way he like." Makes his guitar sound yeah, how he yeah. plays it. I was like, yeah. apparently I fucking play like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of like took that and I nurtured it as like a a way to preserve my sound, like somewhat. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Like if I ever lose my way, you know, like, right? that's an important like, album for me. Gotta go, like tune back in with the seven. Uh -huh. That's how we're gonna make it work. That and obviously OK Computer. <laughs> there you go. I was gonna say, well, which Radiohead is your OK radio Computer? Head? Yeah. So I, it, in Rainbows is kind of like right there though. Yeah, that's a good one. In Rainbows is, is perfect. I, was in I the love the band. That's because I love the melodies more. Yes. It's me, like a beautiful melancholy. To me, like that's it. their most melodic album, mm -hmm. is the bends. Yes. I mean, with totally the harmonies, because right. I always love vocals. They make beautiful sounds and do beautiful things, but the bends is the one that... And it took me forever to hear it. I heard so much other ones, so many other Radiohead records before that one for some reason. I knew songs from it, but I never actually sat down with it, because I was just too busy or something. Yeah. And then I remember when I sat down with it, the friend who... He gave it to me and he's like, Mo, listen, sit, go home, sit down, listen to this record from yeah. start to finish. You have to get through the whole thing because I know you know it, but you don't know you it. You don't know it. Right? And I sat down and listened what is to it. it all fake, the what's on there? Fake plastic trees yeah. down there? High street Spirit? Isn't Street Spirit on and, there? Uh, High and yes, Dry? Street Spirit. That Street Spirit is insane. Okay. You know the band The Darkness? Yeah. So they cover Street Spirit. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's a hard song. It's a hard it's song. It's actually an easy song to play. But it's amazing. But to perform, it like yeah. takes energy from me. I've seen them do it. I, they have it on. They have it recorded now too, That's but awesome. I've seen them do it live. Because my ex-boyfriend loved that band, so we used to go see them, and they were really fun live. And I remember when they performed that, I was like, wait, oh, this is a Radiohead song. And my ex-boyfriend didn't know jack about music. So he's like, I don't know what Radiohead is. And I'm all... Trust me, this is just kind of insane what's yeah. happening right now. That's all, you know. So, and that's a beer band, if there's ever a beer band. Yeah, you for real. Darkness. You're just drinking beer on that. That's not sophisticated at all. <laughs> so I think I would ask you then, um, to go back to the cocktail thing, um, are there, when you're listening to music, or let's talk again about like maybe, maybe like a Radiohead. What's Radiohead, co what Radiohead cocktail gonna be? That's tough. Right? Because they're so esoteric. That's tough. I'd say like a, like a, like a bitter drink. Honestly. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Like some kind of Negroni variation or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's you know, interesting. Something simple with a with like a like More a of zest. Sit down. Mm -hmm. You sit down. A nice big cube. Yeah, a big cube. <laughs> yeah, because it's like it's me. Their songs are metered. Like it's like an adventure. So mm -hmm. I think to match that with like a like See, a again, like you a didn't think twice. It's weird because no one's ever asked question. no one's ever asked me these questions about <laughs> those two things. Yeah. But apparently I've been apparently doing them it's long enough. In your mind. I guess so. Have you guys ever done like a music oriented cocktail menu here? No, they keep but changing. I should. I well, I've been trying to come up with my own for the fall. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, I've been trying to I've gather from my I've musical influences music. because I don't. That's where I was. What I am. Yeah. So I might as well. Tr but I've, we've I've never seen that. I'll jump into a bar and they might have drinks that are made for certain artists. Like there's a Bowie cocktail or something. Yeah. Or, I remember. <laughs> But what's so a Bowie cocktail? Yeah, right? I mean, well, I've seen a couple different Bowie cocktails. It could be cool, but subjective. Yeah. Well, yeah it could <laughs> you know? be anything. It could really. be anything. It could, you could do a whole Bowie menu. It could be like, yeah, it could be like, have a, like, a needle as a garnish. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. And that would be like... <laughs> and a wig. <laughs> it would be like before the Berlin years. This would be the L.A. years. I mean, the the L.A. junk years. Your, your cocktail would change wardrobe every 30, 30 right? minutes. That's what I was saying. I remember when you a different was, dress on every time. Dude. You're, you go, Scott, you're making it. <laughs> it's here. Oh, now you're coughing. That's your turn. <laughs> oh, my God. That was good. <coughs> We're so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. No, I remember one year a friend of mine told me, he's this really tall, handsome black man, right? And I'm like, what are you going to do for Halloween? He goes, I think I'm going to be David Bowie. <laughs> and I started laughing. I'm like, which Bowie? And then he was all, we should all be David Bowie. <laughs> I was like, we should. We should all dress one as David Bowie. One of our bartenders was Ziggy Stardust, probably. Yeah, right? So my roommate at the time did Ziggy, the Ziggy Stardust Bowie. And she wore like a bodysuit, like a like a cream, or it was like skin yeah, tone bodysuit. Yeah. She just did this thing, got the wig, and then um, my best friend did Tin Machine David Bowie. He just <laughs> wore the big suit, the suit. Yeah. And um, and I couldn't think of a David Bowie. I'm like, I'm too. This is too much pressure for me. And my friend, the the handsome black man, did Aladdin Sane David Bowie, like with the big shoulder pads yeah. and the kind of clown thing. So he did that one. 
and uh, and then his girlfriend did Hunky Dory because she had kind of longish hunky hair. Hunky Dory, that'd be cool. So she's like kind a, of the hippie one, like the blonde hair with the yeah, makeup. right, with kind of the high waisted pants. So I, she did that one. What's that movie he's in? I think I would the do the one. The man who fell to earth. No, the the oh um the the labyrinth. Yes, ah, I would be labyrinth. So you be, what was he? Jareth. Jared. You want to be him? You want the cod piece and everything? He had like shoulder pads down to here, yeah, like and that crazy ass wig. And the yeah, the long blonde mm -hmm. wig. <laughs> okay, so and the gloves. Oh my All god. All right, Eddie, this is your goal. David Bowie cocktail menu. Okay. Because yeah. you can have so many different drinks. That's true. That would count. So I David mean, Bowie cocktail and think and of all the errors. Each is garnished with a different dress or high heels. Yeah, right. <laughs> the last one is the black star. Yeah, you yeah. You can use activated charcoal. The black star. Since everybody's so into activated He's charcoal so right now. He's so intense with that. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. All right, so we're both Bowie fans as well then. Oh yeah. There you go. Well, if we can dork it on that for a second. What's your favorite Bowie? Moon Age Daydream. You see, again, didn't even think. <laughs> I, I change my mind all the I time. But actually, it's hard, I know. I do, but my Because my the man who sold the world is so <laughs> fun to listen to. Well, my consistent ones are Look Back in Anger. Mm -hmm. I love that song. I love Boys Keep Swinging. That song always makes me happy. Um, Absolute Beginners, we jump into the 80s. Was that a, a memory of a free festival? A free memory of a festival? One I of those. Know that. It's on, I think it's on, no. Memory of a Free Festival, I think it's called. I don't know that one. Oh, it's great. I'm it, like, it, I feel terrible. I should know it this It starts one. down here, and by the end of the song, it's like a group well, I'm a chant along. Rock and roll suicide. Oh, I love that, that one. one. And same thing, because just the way it ends, because it's the same kind of thing. It yeah, builds it so builds. much. And yeah. then at the end, when it builds. You're wonderful. Yeah. When he starts You're wonderful. That, yeah, I love I start it. crying. I love it, yeah. Right? And then so true. I listen to that, and it takes me back, or I shouldn't say. Then I see, oh, yes, yeah, this is where Hedwig at the end of Hegwig, yeah. they do the same thing. They do kind of the same song, and I'm like, you already knew it was a Bowie tribute yeah. the whole way through. Yeah. But then that happens, and there you go. So, all right, I feel like I should let you get back to work. You're gonna go watch some competitions now, Yeah, right? I gotta go support my bartender friend, Yoli. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So we've got one of the other uh, lady who works here. Uh -huh. y y Yolanda, be, Yolanda, Yolanda Baez. is competing. She's competing with, um, all right. with a Sapphire event. And is she competing for herself or on behalf of Broken Shaker? Uh, for herself, uh, representing Broken Shaker. Representing Broken Shaker. Yeah, if she wins, fantastic. she goes to London. Oh, really? This is the semifinals right now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, super happy you definitely have to go over there. Yeah, I need to get some drinks. All right, cool. Go over there, get some drinks. Thank you, Eddie, so much for talking with me Thank today. Thank you, Mo. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I hope to see that that Bowie menu exists at some point in the future. Yes, and I hope to see this podcast continue yeah, totally. and flourish <laughs> and blossom. Thank you very much. Yes, thank All you. right, I think we're good. Until next time. Thank you to Eddie Spaghetti and The Broken Shaker for joining us today. The Broken Shaker can be found in Miami. That's the original. Also in Chicago. And the latest incarnation is in Los Angeles. So check them out online. And check out the link in the profile to go to Eddie's Spotify playlist of all the things he likes to listen to while he's uh, drinking his scotch. Music and Booze with Mo is brought to you in part by The Blind Rabbit, a speakeasy located in the Anaheim Packing District. The Blind Rabbit has twice been given Best Mixology Awards by the OC Register, as well as several nominations for their innovative cocktail program. For more info and to make reservations, go to theblindrabbit.com. Thanks for being a part of the podcast today and tuning in. It means a lot to me that you're listening. And, you know, we do our best here with you. So jump over to the Facebook page. That is Mo Herms over on Facebook. There's also a Spotify profile, SheBMo, S-H-E-B-M-O. For more information on past shows and playlists submitted by our guests, also where our guests bartend and that sort of thing. And thanks a lot. Join us at the bar, won't you? We'll see you next time. <laughs>